Hello everybody, I'm John Vitas and we're here today at North Florida Raceway on this Father's Day weekend and unfortunately we're going to have to talk about uh, more of a, a little bit of a sad subject here and that's the tragic death of uh, Ben Geiger Jr. I'm here with uh, Ben Geiger and uh, Ben it's got to be tough for you on this Father's Day weekend. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened on that sad day? Um, my son was at Pax Track and he was riding. He took a, about a 50 foot jump and came down and slid out. When he slid out, he hit the ground facing the track and another rider came over the track and hit him in the head and killed him. Uh, it was very instant. Uh, the uh, track had no flaggers or anything, so there was no way to know my son was down. Uh, he was just part of the payment when it was all over with. Uh, so what we have done is tried to build a track that had more safety and uh, better set up for kids to ride without them being in danger of this happening again. Uh, we built a tower and we put some lights on the track. Uh, the red lights come on, the track stops, if the yellow lights come on, no jumping. This gives the kids some kind of chance to get off the track before being impelled by another motorcycle. My son was everything to me. He uh, worked with me, we rode together, we worked together, we had fun together. And a Father's Day without him is just really unbearable. Uh, there's, there's hardly any words I can say of the grief not having my son with me. Uh, so if we can do this, Ben's rule and uh, put it on the tracks, maybe more fathers and kids will be, you know, it's a good sport. The fathers and the kids stay together, they play together out here and uh, the kids don't get in trouble. My son's never been in trouble. He's just a 17 year old senior uh, with uh, his whole life in front of him and a great kid. The motocross world is what was his world. Nobody can uh, deny that it's not a dangerous sport, but he was always very safe in it and not cutting up to where he had a chance to, to make a good living doing it if that's what he wanted to do. Well, Ben, I got to tell you, it's uh I read about the Ben's rule and I wanted to kind of maybe go into uh, actually what some of those rules are and I'm going to go on memory here so I'm sure I'm going to miss part of it so uh, let me know where I went wrong here. I think uh, one of the first rules on the Ben's rule list was the fact that uh, you, you shouldn't be able to come on to a racetrack and uh, practice without a parent or guardian present. And uh, also I think one of the rules that I read about in there also was uh, the fact that uh, that not only does the the parent or guardian need to be present, but that parent or guardian can't just come up here and sign the kid up and drop him off and just leave. They need to be, you know, at the track the whole time uh, that the uh, youth is out there practicing. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about this, uh, what you've done to the track here. It looks like it shows some similarities, uh, some similarities, excuse me, to uh, what NASCAR does in essence. And that's basically, um, I've noticed throughout the track, we basically have um, yellow lights that, uh, that can be turned on. And from what I understand, they can be turned on from several different locations of the track. So it... Uh, it looks like it's it's a, it's a good thing, obviously, because we need to know um, motocross has changed a lot. The the jumps are bigger. Back in you and I's heyday, you could see over these jumps, and obviously you can't now. Um, how much time and effort uh, was put into this? Because it looks like it was a, it was a pretty good uh, undertaking here. Well, there was close to three and a half months work, and we're still not done. We've got a lot of tweaking to do. Uh, we're thinking about putting some strobes up on top of the yellow and red lights just to make sure that the uh, riders are seeing them. Okay, we're going to show you an example of uh, what we're uh, talking about here in terms of the Ben's rule and getting some lights on this track. Now, Ben, we talked earlier, we have pretty much the standard issue caution light like you would see on a traffic light, um, and we were talking about maybe enhancing that to uh, generate a little bit more visibility. So this is what you guys have come up with. Uh, how is this, is this going to be powered off the existing current, or is this how, how are we going to work these? It'll be powered off the same current. Uh, we're going to put this strobe above the red and the yellow lights just for to get your attention grab your attention a little easier and we're also going to put a, a sound device that will make a, a loud enough sound that will get your attention we're going to try to get this light 
turned on within five seconds of somebody going down. So I guess uh, when my head flagman uh, puts a black flag out, uh, the excuse of I didn't see the caution, that's out the door these days, huh? That's right. All right, folks, there it is. Just another addition here. I'm here with Ben Geiger, and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit more safety here today. Thanks, Ben.